Hey, what is up everybody? It's Ivan here and first I wanted to apologize that I uh, wasn't able to release a video in some while but now I'm back and it's gonna be good. So in the last video we've built this uh, little pretty uh, Android app with edge detection and buttons. I'm, I'm missing the button. Okay, I'm getting it. Yeah, and this and now is the time for us uh, to actually get to like the real cool stuff because in this video we're gonna learn how to work with OpenCV's DNN module now what is in and module and why it's so dope for those of you who don't know and it's cool because it's basically like an island of each of the major deep learning frameworks like tensorflow cafe torch darknet uh yeah inside of OpenSea. so it basically gives you the ability to run to inference each of the frameworks inside of OpenCV. Uh, now, I guess those of you who work with like Python and OpenCV have probably done something like that. Or, you know, if you follow the YOLO version 3 series that I've done in the, like the first video is basically us uh, running YOLO in Python. And the logic here is, you know, it's OpenCV on Android, but it's, you know, 3.4.3, the current version that I'm using, and it's like, it's still OpenCV, it's on Android, so a uh, couple of things are gonna be like really different and hard to figure out, but I'm gonna walk you through those things. And, but it's still the same DNN module, so we're still gonna be able to uh, run, you know, all the neural nets that we would normally be able to run in Python. With the difference that there's, there, there's like no NumPy here, and it's Java, but, you know, it's not gonna stop, so... In this video, we'll actually learn how to work with the DNN module, uh, and in the next one, like, we'll launch the, like, we're gonna, basically over the course of, like, this video and the next one, we're gonna learn how to launch Tiny Yellow version 3 uh, on your Android devices, and, like, in this video, we'll launch this weights, and in the next one, we'll kind of learn how to process their outputs and how to, you know, actually get them to, you know, legitimately work, so... Yeah, first of all, let me just plug my phone because let me just start talking a little bit about the uh, DNA module, like uh, some quick, quick theory. So, first of all, let me just get into my phone Oops, from my computer, just a sec. Okay, so now I can go and... Oh, okay, we're in. So here's like the. So first of all, let's talk for a little bit about the memory on Android, and it's a bit irrational, but not, don't worry, it says internal memory here, and it's a little bit confusing for, uh, for for a couple of reasons. So, so let's talk a little bit about memory on Android. Now I'm like inside my phone's external memory, and it's a little bit confusing because. There are like two main memory types, kinda, like uh, there's external memory and there's internal memory and external memory is basically your phone's memory, it's it's your phone's hard drive or you know, whatever and internal, like that's external, like all the stuff, all the files that I have on my computer are external, external memory and you may be asking yourself like what's internal memory and in internal memory is the memory that belongs to the app so if you have like some app say youtube and it stores some files inside of itself you know on your machine like this is internal memory if youtube you know decided to save something in itself uh like that's internal memory like it's inside of the app we cannot like in user cannot access without like root uh rooting their devices that internal memory and but you know the external memory is basically here and the reason why I'm telling you this, the reason why I'm telling you this is um, there's an obvious problem right when we're trying to run, you know, neural networks on Android. Because like the first, like the first problem, like is obviously how do we, you know, do all the syntax and uh, post process the outputs and all that stuff. However, like the real first problem is how do we get the weights on, on the Android device in the first place, and that's and that's like, just listen carefully, like this is, when I was figuring this stuff out, it took me a couple of days, like like two days of pain to figure this stuff out, so like listen carefully. Uh, what are the ways that you can load the weights 
view the GNN uh, module in OpenCV. Like, there may be nicer ways with other frameworks, but that's how we go, go with OpenCV. So, when we build our Android apps, for instance, like here, this guy, it's my working app for like tests and stuff, we can have an assets folder and put some neural, neural nets in there. Um, like, that's gonna be like the first one, yeah. Let's, let's name it that. So, the first way that we can load the weights into OpenCV's DNN module on Android from assets, but here's the problem, we can not actually load the weights from assets. So, assets is kind of like the folder where you may, you know, throw some files that you want for your application to work. You know, it's, 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 you know, if you're not familiar, familiar with Android development, like, that's where you throw a couple of files and you know that your app may be working with but the problem is just that open series like c++ classes and stuff they cannot access the assets folder because assets folder gets compressed uh whenever the app is like launched right so we can just put something in the assets folder here and expect it to like work expect the yield to be able to launch you know stuff from there However, you can see that, so we can't just launch it from assets, but you can see that, you know, in my testing app, I have some neural nets there, some, my bus yellow, uh, you know, models there, and, but why did I put them there then? And it's a little workaround, and like, this is gonna be the first way. So we can actually put those files in there, and it's like this guy i think is like 80 megabyte this guy is like a couple of kilobytes and this guy is like 30 megabytes so it's like 100 or something megabytes here you know in this assets folder but we'll have to basically copy uh all those files from the assets folder to our phone to like you know, gosh. we'll have to so a way to launch from the assets folder is to take these neur neural nets in the assets file and then unpack them in the internal memory of the app in the memory that only the app has access to right uh, so take those files and copy them and thus you know un uncompress them and copy them in the internal memory of the app so you know when we do that obviously our app will be like 100 megabytes heavier because we'll basically double the amount of data that it takes but that's like one way we can copy the weights inside of inside of you know inside of our app right in the internal number of our app it's it's confusing so i'm you know trying to make it as clear as possible and the problem here is that the weights will be uh like the size of the app will double like the size of the weights and the neural nets will double however so okay and, but, by the way, like, the saving the assets and copying the, you know, method is actually not that bad for one reason. You know, if your neural nets are small enough, you can just plug them into the uh, APK file and you can just easily it and run them from there. But it's one way that you can load them into OpenCV. The second way is to, is to just load them, just download them. For instance, in our app that me and my friend have been building for like visually impaired people, um, when whenever the user launches their app for like the first time, they actually have to wait a couple of minutes for about like 200 megabytes worth of neural nets to download. So we can uh, just build the APK and have like a little function that'll you know download the all the weights and all the models onto our device when the app like first launches, and but anyway, like it, you have to do all those things like once with the assets guy, you know, you have to do that once and with um, downloading the weights, you also gotta kind of do that just once, download them, they're there. And the benefit of like downloading, downloading them from the web, you know, we have basically a Google Drive sharing links and download from there that works like magic, you know, so no expensive, you know, ways to host your files are necessary, I think, you know, unless it's illegal or something. Uh, hope, hopefully it's not because you know I don't want to go to jail and stuff but 
uh, you can download the weights from the web and that'll work and that'll like do all the things that it should do so it's kind of like the second way it's 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 the way that we actually use with my friend in our app development so it's kind of like the best one i think if you have a lot of neural nets and you also don't want your app to weigh you know twice so it's not gonna be like 300 megabytes but, it, but it's gonna be like 600 like who wants that so this is i think it's a bit more complicated and but it's like the second way and the third way that we'll actually start and then i think i'll show you over the next couple of videos how to work with the copying file and how to work with the third way that i'm gonna explain right now and yeah and how to maybe download them also so like the first way is to copy the second is to download them from the web and the third way is to uh put the weights like and this is and this is like the way that's good for you know starting out because it's really hard to mess it up and what i mean by that is this is good for like development stages of your app which is like we're gonna be able to run apps the, the app but for now we're gonna put our tiny yellow uh manually in the external memory of our phones which is again external memory is the memory that's basically your normal memory and the internal memory is the memory that only the app has access to so here's here's like how we're gonna do that um i've created this folder i've called the g and ants deep neural networks and i've put yellow version 3 tiny there and yellow version 3 wait so i'm just gonna go and copy it to okay i think i already have that folder here huh oh great i actually have this folder here already but i mean if you don't you just uh, it's got some of the other neural nets that I'm actually gonna show you how to use. Uh, first, this one, like for face detection stuff, I think this is gonna be like the next video after this one or something. But obviously, you don't have that folder, so you just create this kind of folder, put yellow, over three, yellow version 3 CFG file out there, and just copy it here. And I already have it, so it's, it's like the most, like, this is like the base folder of your phone's external memory so just put it there okay we oh, got it now let's actually start doing something with it so let's say that we have our app right and in our activity.xml here mm, we have our button here and what if I can make it bigger. So here we have this button, this button uh, that you know that we've learned how to build in the previous video. So you know, go watch that if you wanna learn that edge detection. So we have this button, and sorry that I'm repeating myself a lot. I haven't done this in a while, to be honest, and I'm still kind of like get into sh the shape so let's say this button will be then named uh yellow because we're going to be launching yellow with it and it'll launch the function called also yellow so now let's actually go and redefine from the previous video the yellow function which you know long story short we can only control this on camera frame function that gets triggered with the boolean variables so that's what we're kind of going to be using here name it like start this time yellow and it'll be like start yellow so we're basically like renaming our single button here all right great so and here on camera frame now mm, yep so here we'll delete this stuff because we we'll no longer want to be, you know, deal dealing with edge detection. But here's how we're gonna frame, you know, this task for, for you know, for Android. Let's say that when the user uh, launches his app for the first time, like when the user launches the app and then taps the button to launch yellow. Uh, or like any other neural net, by the way, like any other neural net works here. Uh, let's say that when he does that for the first time, we'll lo load it like into the memory, like we'll you know load the whole thing, and yeah. So 
it'll gonna go just bear with me here it's gonna be like boolean uh first time yellow which by the way first time you only once <laughs> it's it kind of does sound like a uh like quite a you know how to like qu quite a writing like quite a hashtag that you put under like your tooth or something when you did something cool so um and so this is like when circular is false okay so here we're saying that, okay so okay i remember it so we press the button and if the current state of our start yellow variable is false we'll make it true and if it's true we'll make it false so when we when it's false and we make it true let's add some something here we'll say uh if uh first time uh time yellow uh if first time yellow is equal to false how about that okay first time yellow will equal to false and here's and here like actually gonna load the whole thing so before we do that we gotta go here and mm, we gotta import we gotta import org open cv uh gnn like this so we've this basically imports everything from the uh gnn module or you know we can leave it like this yeah i guess it's also gonna wait what okay so here it is we can import the gnn module like this so and um, here we'll have so we gotta define the kind of object of our neural network and it's gonna be a net object i think it's something like this okay it's gonna be net uh we'll name it net uh yellow yellow nope let's name it just tiny yellow okay uh and i'll be kind of like yep I'll, okay So we'll define this kind of tiny yellow net uh, object and <clears throat> so in here we can do the out out enter thing and i think it i think it found that it's the class of it's the net class that Yel that open cv uses to you know work with all this okay so We'll say first time yellow, like if we've never launched yellow on our phones before, like we're gonna be loading into memory only once, so that's why we're doing this. Um, yeah, so we'll say, so we'll say that uh, tiny, tiny yellow will equal to gnn uh, dot read net from dark net, and here as you can see, we gotta give it string cfg file and string uh darknet model the cfg in the weights file basically that's what it wants us to give it so let's go and define those guys here it's gonna be string uh tiny yellow cfg cfg um what do you look like okay i think yeah the capital letter uh, let's li let's leave them blank for for now okay so and if you remember we've so okay um and if you remember what we went to do here we we basically went to put our uh yellow version 3 in the genus folder so how do we like how the hell uh, do we access that from like the path like what like in windows like it's all clear and nice you know you have like your c drive and then you know your program files and folders and on android it's basically almost the same thing uh but let me show you so we'll say so let me just remind myself how to do that so we'll say uh, okay we'll say an environment that get uh, external storage directory so this guy right here is 
Wait, what does it not like? Okay, I see. I don't actually see what it not doesn't like. Okay, cool. So, so this guy basically gets us here to the. Gosh, it's it's external external storage director basically, and from here we want this guy to uh, go to the GNANs to the GNAN folder first. So it'll be like. Uh, let me just copy it. It's gonna be a ton simpler with this. So basically, say, like, give us the path to the external storage directory, and then, and then go to the GNANs folder and load the tiny yellow C CFG file. Awesome, just what we wanted. So, and then for for the weights file, just go and do the same thing. Go and actually the same thing but with just one difference uh get the weights file from this guy so yep now we can just go ahead and put tiny yellow uh cfg and tiny yellow by the, by the way by the way let me know let me know in the comments i feel like i feel like i'm repeating too much stuff honestly <laughs> Feel like I'm repeating too much stuff. Uh, is it good if you've like never experienced? Like, is it useful or should I just be moving quicker? You know, because I really feel like I'm repeating myself a lot here. But hopefully that you know educational stuff. So, yep. Now we've got. Now we've now we've got the all the paths. So like everything's good, and we can actually so. When we'll press the button for the first time, we'll say that the first time yellow is false. We gotta we gotta set it to true also. So that you know we wouldn't be loading the weights like every single time. So that'll do the job. Set up the you know paths and just give it the CVG file, give it the weights file, and we have the tiny yellow object. So let's move into the on-camera frame guy. So here we'll say that um here if you remember uh how to work with yellow and like with neural network like it's also like it's like the second important part of this video i guess like it's important just um we're gonna construct a blob so you know we get as input that three dimension three dimensional rgb matrix which is image uh but with all that uh, we gotta input to the network, like we gotta, gosh, you know what the blob is, right? In OpenCV, um, we gotta pre-process the image, and that's what the blob, blob from image function is here. So we'll say uh, matrix uh, image blob, and we'll name it like uh, DRAN blob from image. And so this is basically like pre-processing, so we have our normal image, but we gotta pre-process it to 416 by 416 uh, dimensions for the shape of the yellow input. We gotta make it also four dimensional because that's kind of how convolutional neural nets roll. Like they need the four dimensional input because you know they 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 process four dimensional bytes. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, we. So I went ahead and copied a few things. So like pre-pressing image is like one of the most important parts because if you are not able to give it the proper input resolution, like nothing is going to work. So what I'm doing here is that I'm first of all taking that RGBA uh, RGBA type of image and basically converting it from RGBA to RGB here RGBA to RGB you no know, pre forward and then we're, we're constructing the blob and I'm gonna like walk you through each value here. So, um, it's, you know, again, and Blob is a four-dimensional matrix of an image that we input to some, to the neural net, to the convolutional neural net that we wanna, wa want it to work with. So, first of all, we give it the frame, like the image that we wanna, like, convert, then we give it the, uh, scale factor and this number here it's basically you can check it in a calculator or something it's basically one over 255 and 255 is the 
uh, colors, you know, point CO matrix. Uh, okay, so you know, we convert the image, and so this guy is basically the scale factor. So we're basically scaling the image to be in the percentage values. So for instance, we have like some, uh, some you know, uh, for instance, like the zero x zero y pixel in our images. 255 0 and what is like 120 125 say and by we're basically a scale factor we're basically multiplying it by 1 over 255 so you know it would be basically like a 1 uh, a 0 and 0.5 about that so we're converting like all the values to kind of like the percentages, which is real nice for neural nets to work with. Then we're resizing the image, the input resolution for 116 by 416. And then we're like the, this is the scale, like this is the average sub mean subtraction, like something like that. We're really with the zeros, it's kind of like the part where you can think, subtract uh, certain values from like pixels. On average, uh, some neural networks need, need that, some don't, but just leave it at zeros. Like, we don't want to do any uh, mean subtraction or something like that. And swap RB refers to whether, whether we want to swap the red or the uh, and the blue channels, because you know, the kind of like, you know, OpenSea wor works in BGR. Gosh. <laughs> OpenSea work my Python comments. Uh, OpenSea works in BGR, but, but 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 like none of applications work in RGB. But, but I think everything works in RGB. So OpenCV, you know why? Anyway, and sometimes you know the neural network was trained in RGB, and we're using it like in like BGR. Like it's obvious that we want to swap the uh, blue and red channels that you know. Because, like, you know, if your neural net was trained in RGB and you give it, like, BGR, if you have, like, a banana and the banana is suddenly, like, not yellow, the banana is suddenly, like, uh, pink or, you know, blue or something, the neural net will not be able to, like, process the images uh, well enough. So we gotta keep that, you know, the same colors the net was trained in, we gotta give it the same colors here. So, um, yeah. In our case, we already converted the frame to RGB, so the yellow was trained in RGB and we've converted to RGB here and yeah we, we're not swapping anything and we're also like not cropping our image but yeah, like we're almost done <laughs> okay by the way I'm really trying to be as informative as I, as I can here so you know I really I really hope that it's useful because you know it took a while for me to figure out so I hope that you know helps um by the way, now we can actually now we can actually get our frame and here is what we do. We say tiny yellow. And by the time uh, by the time that we've pressed this button, the tiny yellow have already been defined here. Yep, tiny yellow have already been defined here. By the time we press that button, so it should be cool. And we say tiny yellow set input. Which is setting it. And we give it not the frame, but we give it the image block. And now we can say uh, tiny yellow that forward. And in the next and like in the next video we're gonna uh, we're gonna actually post process the output. So right now when we'll let me just build this up on my phone and I gotta I gotta quickly unplug it and plug it in again. Okay, so now it's, now it's here. Okay. Now let me, let me let me actually debug the app while I'm talking. So, and right now what we'll see is you know we'll have some frames going on, and then at some point, and like once we press the button, we'll basically see like a delayed frame. So the frame will be like changing, you know, after two or three seconds for for the neural net to process them. So we'll we'll see no outputs right now, but the net will be working, and. Seeing outputs is actually one of the more important things here, because you know when it comes to like YOLO and other neural networks, like for phase detection, for numbers, we're actually gonna pre-process them. So, so 
what we can define here, for instance, in the future. Actually, I'm gonna explain it a little like in the next video, which should come out real soon, because I'm gonna make it right now. But anyway, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you what we'll see right now, and that'll be better if I just show you. Okay, so in the best tradition of me uh, doing these videos, I forgot to uh, do the permissions part. So when we're trying to load something from the external storage from the storage of the phone we like obviously gotta ask a permission for it so but it's pretty pretty straight actually why why google it let's just go to this apps manifest and this, this is how the permission looks like to read and to write the external storage because yeah because you know because 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 you know we're trying to launch something from the external storage it's good if we have the permission to that so now we'll now <laughs> now we'll actually now it should actually work and right now uh when we're gonna build this app right now before launching it we're gonna need to go to our app settings i've shown that in the previous video we'll go to the settings of the app and manually give it the permission to use the external storage because that's how we roll for it. like remember how you give it the permission to use the camera just go to the same place to uh use write and read external storage and that should work i hope gosh but it's you know you never know until you actually build, build the app and but, by the way like watch how i'm doing this watch how i'm doing this i go to run and i say debug the app and then i go to the debug console here and well, now it's obviously like already installed on my phone, but when it'll be launched, like, that's super useful, because that's how you figure out where you messed something up, like, where is the error. So my phone is like connected by the uh, USB cable, and so right now you can see that, you know, I've, I'm, I log into my app, you know. And it's receiving the frames now if i click here it'll say that yo 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 like there is an error here and that's how i, I you know figured out that like hey you can load the nets of course it's because um it's because i didn't give you the permission to, to do so so we'll go to uh tiny yellow and i'm gonna go and find my app here okay okay, okay. i'm gonna like go in So I've like found the app Android series. Ugh. Oof. Found the app Android series. Here I gotta give it the permission to use memory on my phone. It's in Russian, so <laughs> anyway, why am I even showing you this? But here's the cool part. So right now if I launch the app and I say yellow here, do you see what do you see what's happening? Do you see like the frames like they drop to like about uh, 0.5 frames per second or something you know like you see that the frames are going slow and my phone you know on the other hand is getting hot I can't really show you how hot my phone is but it's getting kind of hotter probably because we've also been installing the apps but anyway you can see that the frames are kind of going like sluggishly and that's basically because each each frame the neural nets get gets processed now we can turn it off and I'll go back to normal turn it on again so each time YOLO gets processed by the way like on your phone if your CPU on the phone is like a ton better it's gonna be a ton faster you know and yeah on my phone it's about one or two seconds it takes to process one tiny yellow but you know it's just processing like when it'll come to actually so right now you can see that the frames are kind of going like at the uh, like 0.5 fps per second on my device or something and like actually like each time uh, you know you see like this like a stream like it's actually yellow then yellow being processed on your android device you know locally and that's why you know the delay here we can turn it off and we'll go back to normal we can turn it on again okay and so each time the tiny yellow gets processed but you know we're obviously not seeing any outputs and that's because 
post processing the outputs is like the whole different animal of its own now luckily i'm actually gonna be releasing the next video like ridiculously soon because you know i'm gonna be making it right now so you're not gonna have to wait hopefully to see that one but yeah we're running neural nets on our android devices we're just not seeing the outputs yet because we're actually gonna define all those functions to like draw rectangles and display the outputs and stuff yeah and once we do it'll be awesome so i really enjoyed making this video and i hope that it brought you value i know that it's been like a uh, a longer video but you know just it took me it, I, I don't know i've been figuring this stuff out myself like, for like three days or something like through, through our trial, trial and error there are not that many uh, tutorials on how to work with gene and module and android like i found just one article from OpenSphere and that was useful uh and especially not to how to run like you know, all the different neural nets so you know just me making this a little bit longer video i hope that like it's an opportunity to uh to kind of like for you to be able to quicker figure out like what kind of way you need to take with uh your app development so yeah i hope that you guys really enjoy this i hope that you guys are having a great day uh, if you want to support me if you're like in a position and you wanna you're like can do that and want to do that uh, ways to do that are in the description thank you so much if you do it really means a lot a lot and the other way you, that you can support me is to of course smash that like button to let me know that you guys are just as excited as i am uh, about the series and of course to subscribe so you know if you haven't yet noticed those are like serious and new parts are coming out so if you don't want to miss them please hit this subscribe button and a lot of new cool stuff is coming and gosh gosh guys uh, i wish you uh, all the best and i hope that you are doing fan freaking tastic bye